What is up amigos? Today we're looking at the vehicle position and how that affects the aerodynamics of the vehicle. So to begin with, we have a car here and we have the ground, it's on the ground driving along and we have a free stream velocity of whatever, it could be 10 meters per second, 20 meters per second, whatever. Now we have the car and we have something called the angle of attack. And if you don't know what the angle of attack is, this is the angle at which any object is flying or hitting the air at. So if you have like an object like this and it's coming towards the air and the air is this way, there's a bit of an angle between these two sections. That is the angle of attack. And there is no difference for a car. So if we were to draw a center line through the car and we have the road here, when they meet effectively, we have this angle here, which could be, let's say three degrees for this particular situation. So why is this important? Well, if you know about airfoils or if you've seen our video on airfoils, for example, in this video here, you will know that airfoils, they produce lift and drag at different angles of attack. And cars are actually not quite different to that. In fact, a car is quite similar to an airfoil. So an airfoil or a wing looks like this. And we have an angle of attack to the ground here or whatever it is, to the free stream velocity. Here would be the ground, here it's the free stream velocity. And the reason why this is important is because when you look at a car, we have a flat underbody. Then on top, we have this roof section, and this is where the people sit in here as they drive along. And this is important because this is effectively a cambered wing now. And what this means is that even if the car is completely flat and so the air is coming on directly straight, the car will still produce a, a certain amount of lift. So let's talk about this here. We have a graph here, which has the angle attack on this axis here. Zero is here, and let's say 15 degrees is here. So it's very extreme. The car is really pitched up at a lot. And then we have the lift coefficient on this y-axis, and this can range from zero here to minus one to one, let's say. And what we we'll typically find is a typical cambered airfoil uh, graph here. So it will go like this. What this means is that at zero degree angle attack, we don't actually have zero lift. Usually we actually have quite a positive lift and to get a negative lift, even at any angle attack, you usually have to do quite a lot to a car to do this. We need to work on this diffuser. We need to work on the spoilers around the car to overcome this natural tendency for the car to produce lift because we have this flat underbody and curved top. So what this means is that as we increase the angle of attack, so the wind can either come at a different angle or we pitch the car up at a different angle, we will get greater and greater lift. And if we pitch the car nose down, we can start to approach zero and maybe even cross into negative lift if we're lucky. Or we can always work on the diffuser as we've done with different videos and the rear spoiler, front spoiler, etc. And that will affect that. What about the drag? So with every object, we do have drag and there is no difference here. And typically, if we have the same alpha situation here, so the angle of attack, and we go to 15 degrees here, this is zero degrees here, we have the drag coefficient, we might have this up to 0 0.7, let's say, and we go to minus 0 0.7. So the typical uh, point here is we have a minimum at a certain angle of attack, which is negative, and then it starts to go up. And the typical proportion is that for every degree we increase the angle of attack, we get a, about a 2% increase in the drag coefficient increase. So that is a general relationship there. What that means is that we really don't want to pitch the car too far off. We want to really kind of pitch it down a little bit. That's where we come to loading and speed. So in terms of loading, depending where you have these passengers and how many of them and how big they are. So for example, the other day I was sitting in a car with four very large individuals and the car was obviously maxing out its suspension. So that's going to not only lower the ride height, but it's also going to change how the car is rotating. So it might pitch downwards, pitch upwards, depending where the people are, how big they are. And that can change the angle attack of the car. Also the suspension's um, stiffness will also change that as well. In addition, the speed will also change how the car is pitching. And this is because the flow hits the car and the car produces the lift. Now, where the car produces lift compared to where it will rotate about is very important. So if the car rotates about this point here, let's say, and we produce the majority of the lift here, we can see now this is producing a clockwise moment. So the car is actually going to want to pitch down. Alternatively, if we have the lift being uh, mainly produced here, so that we can summate the entire lift over the car, and we can say, okay, it just approximately acts through this point. Now we can see that there's quite a big moment on, and we're actually producing a counterclockwise moment, so the car will be nosing up, and that will increase the angle of attack, increase the lift, and so on and so forth. 
and also increase the drag. So that is how the lift and the speed can affect the car's orientation. And again, the lift and the drag production. Now, just one final thing on the drag is, because this car is bluff, we typically have most of the drag being produced is the pressure drag. So that means that we get a very big wake back here and we have low pressure subsequently on these faces and we have high pressure on these faces. So we have a net change in pressure from front to back and that results in a drag force backwards which is due to the pressure drag. And we've gone through this in other videos such as this one here. And as we increase angle attack, the weight gets bigger and bigger, and we get an increase in the drag, mainly because of the pressure drag. We also do get an increase in, because of the um, induced part of the drag, which we've gone through in another video here, uh, but it's mainly due to the pressure drag. So that is how the vehicle position, so the angle attack, affects the lift, drag, and how the loading and speed of the car affect the car's orientation and in, in sequence the lift and drag. So if you like this video, make sure to like it. And if you're seeing more like this, check out our playlist with these videos and check out a course actually that we've partnered with a JKF, which is a really nice course. We have it in the link in the description. The reason why we like it is because it goes through not only the theory of cars and motorsport in terms of the aerodynamics and the different features of aerodynamics and the different focus devices, but also applications to it. So it's very holistic and it's very much like what we do on our channel. So if you like what we do on our channel, you will very much likely like what they like they do as well. Check that course out in the link in the description. And I'll see you in the video. Peace out, amigos.